In this video, I'm gonna go over five mistakes that music artists and labels, managers, et cetera, make in their ad campaigns promoting their music. I've done something like 2,000 plus one-on-one -on -one consultation calls with, with artists, et cetera, and I see the same mistakes crop up again and again. So this video is the top five, and it probably represents 80% of the mistakes that I see again and again. So mistake number one is not doing enough testing. I'll have an artist on a call and they'll say something like, my campaign is just not working. I'm getting a really, really bad result. So we'll walk through the campaign and I'll see they have a campaign, everything's set up correctly, but they only have one ad set or one audience that they're trying and they only have one ad or one video that they're testing. And one of the biggest truths, maybe perhaps the only truth that I could say in my experience marketing music is that you can't ever be 100% sure how an audience is gonna respond. So with that said, you, you have to hedge your bets. You have to do multiple audiences and multiple ads if you wanna get good results, because chances are your first guess is not gonna be the best possible option. And let me show you what I mean inside of Ads Manager. So this is a, a Spotify or streaming focused campaign, and we're trying three different audiences here. We're trying alternative metal, metal core, and new metal. And if I change the timeline here, you can see that each of these have their own cost, right? 22 cents of conversion, 27 cents of conversion, 84 cents of conversion. But if I dive into this alt metal one, you can see I tried six different ads. Why did I try six different ads? It wasn't for fun. <laughs> it was because I know that different parts of the song are gonna perform drastically differently. And you can see here, 20 cents, 43, 22, 41, 33, 46. These have wildly different cost per conversions. And the winning parts of the song were actually verse one and verse two, right? It wasn't what you would often expect, which is the chorus. The chorus, a lot of the time, isn't the best performing part of the song. So you really just have to test to see which, which audience is gonna perform best and which ad is gonna perform the best. If you just try one audience and one ad, chances are you're gonna have a, a worse campaign than if you tested some stuff and tried to find that winning ad and that winning ad set. Now, this next thing we're gonna talk about is tinkering too much. And this is kind of on the opposite perspective of, of mistake number one, is that people will actually tweak their campaigns too much. They'll launch a campaign and within the first day, maybe 12 hours in, they see a bad result and they, they're changing their audiences, they're turning off audiences, they're making new ads, they're maybe, they might even turn off the whole campaign and launch a new one and then 12 hours later, it's not good, so they do it again. And the thing is, you really can't operate that fast. My general rule of thumb, is when you launch a new campaign, let it sit for at least two days, if not three, so that Facebook can optimize and collect data and test all your different ad sets and different ads. And very often that first day is the worst day of the entire campaign. So you might have a campaign that literally starts at $3 a conversion on day one, and day two, it's down to a dollar. And day three, it's down to 40 cents. And then a week in, it might be down to, to 30 cents or something, right? Like it can really drop. And not every campaign is like that, but especially when you're new to running ads, the first few days are even more critical. And if you're constantly editing stuff and turning stuff off and adding new stuff in, uh, you can seriously mess up the performance of your campaign and you'll never see what the true cost was going to be. I've seen people do this so much that for, you know, for a whole month of a song, they're tinkering with the campaign every single day. And then the, the best they could do was like a dollar conversion. And then after I talked with them, we launched a new campaign and I said, don't touch this damn thing for four days. <laughs> Um, and then all of a sudden the same exact audiences and ads they were using before that cost a dollar were now down to 30 cents, which, which isn't like the craziest, most amazing result in the world, but it's a pretty good, if not great result. And it was before it was costing them a dollar. So make sure you're testing stuff, but don't be touching your ad campaigns every day. I would do only really touch anything every two to three days throughout the campaign's life. Now, this third mistake is letting your emotions get in the way of the data, and I get it, I'm an artist too, I'm in several bands and I love my music and every single song I make is my baby and I love them all, if not equally, at least I love the most recent one the most, right? And that's how a lot of artists are. You love your most recent song that you've been working on more than anything else in the world, it's the best work you've ever done, therefore it should be the best performing campaign you've ever done. And unfortunately, the songs that you love the most aren't always the songs that the general public loves the most or the people who will be in your audience will love the most and people will get very disgruntled by that they think their new song is the best should be the best because it maybe is maybe it is objectively the best song you've ever written that doesn't mean it's going to be the most marketable song you've ever written maybe that song will do good in, in some other ways like maybe your fans will love it the most 
but it doesn't mean it's going to be the best song in an ad campaign. Certain songs will just do better than other songs, and it's not always going to be the song that's objectively the best. It just comes down to not only the quality of the song, but also the marketability of a song. How susceptible are people who've never heard of you to this song to pull them into your world? And this ties in directly with the next mistake, which is spending the same amount of budget on every song you release. Again, just like letting your emotions get in the way and thinking that your newest song is your best song, let's say you plan throughout the year you're gonna spend $500 on every song that you release, which is which is fine, right? Whatever your budget is, that's what your budget is. But that doesn't mean you should spend 500 on every single song you release. Certain songs are just going to do better, right? So why wouldn't you spend more on the songs that are actually doing the best based on real world data inside of ads, right? If song is a better cost per conversion, it has better engagement on Spotify, it's getting bigger, better algorithmic traction, you should spend significantly more on that song than a song that's doing bad in ads. There's a bad engagement rate. The algorithms don't want it. <laughs> so what I do, and I, what I recommend you do, is think about your whole year, right? Let's say you're like, I have $6,000 to spend on marketing this year. Whatever it is, doesn't matter, right? Whatever the number is. And then think of how many releases you're gonna do. I'm gonna release every month. Therefore, I have $500 per song because I'm releasing 12 songs over the course of a year. I have $6,000, that's $500 per song. Then what you do is every song you're going to launch an ad campaign and promote it as if it's the best song in the world. Full ad campaign, multiple ad sets, multiple ads, do the best you can do. But a few days into it, maybe more like a week into it actually, look at the results. Compare it to your previous results. If this Is this new song performing well? If it's performing average, give it that $500. If it's performing very badly, like let's say your, your kind of good results are like 30 to 40 cents per conversion. If it's doing that, just spend your planned budget. Is maybe this song is performing at 60 cents a conversion? Well, maybe only give it $250 or $200 if it's really bad. But then your next song is 25 cents a conversion or 20 cents a conversion. And the engagement rate on Spotify is much better. And the algorithms are picking it up, they're loving it. They're sp spreading it to more people for free. Uh, in that case, you might spend a thousand on that song or 2000 on that song. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just like every song you're gonna promote Certain songs are going to do way better than everything else you've ever done. And let's say out of 10 songs, maybe two will do phenomenal. Two of them are probably going to be awful, in fact. <laughs> and then the six are going to be somewhere in the middle. So like, let's say half of your releases, you're spending less. Two of them, you're spending way more. And then you're, you're, throughout the course of the year, the, the plan is that you kind of average out to that same $500 per song when you average out everything across the year. Because as an artist, you shouldn't really care what song pulls people into your world and makes them a fan. You're just in the business of getting fans. So do you really care if it isn't your newest song that you care the most about right now that pulls them in? Because they might come into your world with a song that you don't believe in as much as your new one that gets them in the door and then they check out your new song and they just love it. But it wasn't the song that pulled them in. And you probably had this experience with bands you love. You found them for some mainstream song that they had and then as you dove into their catalog, you found your favorites that probably are nowhere near the top songs for that artist in a lot of cases. And that's exactly how it will work for every artist, essentially. So now I wanna give you a real world case study of these last two mistakes, like putting your emotions in front of the data and spending equally per song. You can see that these three songs, these three at least had the same countries in them. These two, don't worry about on testing some different stuff out with them, but these three had the same countries in them. 36 cents for this one, 23 for this one, and 43 for this one. In my opinion, out of these three songs, I'd say Omen, in my opinion, is the best one out of the three, followed by Fear, and I'd say Forget is my, my personal least favorite. I wrote all these songs, and I love them all, but my least favorite one is actually the one that's doing the best, and that's just the reality of it. When I'm promoting Omen, I'm a little bummed out that this song's not doing as good as this one because like I loved Forget, but I just love these two more. And that just doesn't always translate into reality. So you have to keep them into account. And the, the smaller your budget is, the more particular you're gonna have to be with how you spend that budget if you wanna get the most out of that budget. If you have you know, $30,000 for the next year, you don't have to be as particular with how you're spending your money because you have a lot of money to, to invest, right? But if, if you have a small, the smaller your budget is, the more, the more you're gonna to have to cut those bad performing ad campaigns so that you can afford to spend enough when you have that good performing ad campaign. So keep that in mind. Now this next mistake is a huge one and I've been talking about this for years, 
but I still see people making this mistake. Every single month, I see at least a couple people make this mistake. And that's using a traffic objective, sending people directly to Spotify instead of using a conversion objective, sending people to a landing page. And the logic of why people do this actually is totally reasonable. Why would I send people to this landing page when some of the people aren't gonna click through? Why don't I just send them straight to Spotify? And that should result in me getting a cheaper cost per result because I'm not sending them to a bridge page in the middle and they have to click. I'm just sending them straight to the place that they want to go to. And that sounds great. The problem is it just doesn't work. I've seen so many people, hundreds in fact, have something like a thousand link clicks from their traffic campaign and less than a hundred streams or maybe even less than 10 streams on Spotify from those clicks. And you might be thinking, well, Andrew, why is that? Well, check out this video that I made in the past for more information on it. But in, in a nutshell, one, bots, there's a lot of bots on Facebook and Instagram, right? So a lot. Bots can click on ads, but they generally are not gonna be able to interact with a landing page. So your conversion page and your landing page kind of filters out those bots. And let me let me show you what, you, what I mean in case you're not familiar with the lingo. I, all these campaigns are what are known as conversion campaigns. And I'm sending people a landing page that looks something like this. So a bot might be able to click on this ad, but they're not gonna be able to, they're not programmed to interact with the links in this page. So that's this is as far as they get. What that means is Facebook doesn't count their click as a successful result, but for a traffic campaign, they would. So Facebook's gonna see if you're running a traffic campaign, a bunch of dirt cheap clicks, and Facebook's like, oh, really cheap clicks. Let's get you more really cheap clicks. And then you end up with just a bunch of bot clicks that don't translate to Spotify. The next one would be, what if people accidentally click in your ad? They're not gonna accidentally click to go stream on Spotify, so they're gonna be filtered out too. And let's say it's a real person that clicked on purpose, but they're so uninterested in your song that they're not willing to click here. Well, do you really want that person on your Spotify if they're not willing to click a second button that takes like no time at all? Probably not, because they're probably not gonna listen for 30 seconds and result in a stream. They're probably not gonna listen to multiple songs. They're probably not gonna save your song or add it to a playlist or follow you. So this, this page in the middle with the pixel on it and all the tracking and stuff, it acts as a, not just a filter for bots and accidental clickers, but it's a filter for quality. And on the Spotify side, you want people who are actually interested, you want them to engage, because all of that stuff is what leads to the high intent rates that we see with ads. The intent rates with ads are incredibly high. They're generally on par with organic traffic and often they're actually higher than organic because we're making people jump through some hoops. So you might have a save rate that's between 50 and 75% and a stream per listener rate of, depending on the song, between a two and a 3.5 um, and a follow rate of five to 10% of the listeners, which is really good. If you compare that with almost any other form of advertising or, or marketing like uh, influencer campaigns or, or playlist promotion, it just blows it out of the water. Um, you know, there's there's obviously merit to other more forms of marketing, but in ads, like this landing page is one of the reasons why the quality is, is higher because we're filtering out the crap. Now, if you're new to these campaigns and you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're still here, then check out this video right here to learn how to make one of these campaigns from start to finish. If you prefer a course that walks you through it step-by-step step from start to finish, then you can check out my course, Spotify Growth Machine right here that also gives you access to a community and my country list and all that jazz. Anyways, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.